Have you ever felt spiritually stuck? If so, you're not alone. Here's the really good news too. If you feel spiritually stuck, the first step is acknowledging that you are stuck, but doing so without condemning yourself. Think of it this way. If you use a GPS and you want to get from where you are to where you want to go, the first thing the GPS must do is locate where you are presently. Without your present location, your GPS would have no way of giving directions on how to get to the place you want to go. So I want to congratulate you for having the courage to acknowledge you're stuck. Hi, my name is John Comstock, and today I want to take a few moments to think through spiritual stuckness. And let me be clear, being spiritually stuck can lead to a great deal of discouragement and frustration. Let's be honest about that. But in a weird kind of way, it's actually a good sign. Because if you weren't discouraged and frustrated, it would be a sign that you're apathetic about your relationship with God. Being discouraged and frustrated means there's a desire not to be stuck. So if that's you, take a deep breath and relax. We can get through this together. If you identify as spiritually stuck, I have a simple question. Do you know why you're stuck? It might be that you can easily identify an addictive behavior, an emotional hangup, a sin struggle, or unhealed trauma. Something that is holding you back from becoming more like Jesus. For others of you, the spiritual stuckness has no identifiable cause. In either case, do know we are here for you and with you. We truly want to see you flourish and thrive. For those who may not be able to identify the cause of your stuckness, here's a thought experiment to reflect on with Jesus and a trusted friend. Describe what it looks like and feels like to be spiritually unstuck. If you were thriving spiritually, describe what going through your daily routine as a thriving follower of Jesus would look like. Are there any particular relationships you would experience differently? In Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Unfortunately, most often we are tempted to think that mastering information about God is the secret sauce to being a great Christian. Yet, knowing things about God is not the same thing as relationally knowing God. We might believe if we check all the boxes on the to-do list by having devotions and prayer, and we watch videos like this one, and if we keep working hard to do good for God, everything will work out okay. We'll get the expected outcome if we pull all the right levers and push the right buttons. The truth is, we are human, and humans are not robots. Although that statement might sound obvious and overly simplistic, sometimes we don't respect the complexity of what it means to be human. You see, as humans, we have a brain and we have a mind. We have emotions. We can think rationally. We have a memory that informs much about how we interpret the world. Respect the fact that our humanity is complex. But here's the good news. It's not too complex for God. With that, here's today's challenge. Now that you've acknowledged you are spiritually stuck, don't keep that a secret. Find a trusted friend you can call or text. Maybe say something like, hey, I'm reaching out to you because I feel sad that I'm not growing spiritually. If you know why you're stuck, confess what keeps you stuck. If you don't know, admit that you don't know. Then here's the most important part. Confess that you need your friend to walk with you. Ask them to get a cup of coffee. Ask them if they will listen to Jesus as they listen to you. And together you can discern what identifiable steps you can take to thrive and win today.